Are you ready to do this? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't have. <laughs> do you? Uh, so you got to intro this because I, I don't know who d- directed it or who. I don't know any of the actors' names. I really don't. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we know Guillermo del Toro produced. We do know that. And it's a movie called The Orphanage. And it came out in. He's looking at it right now. The Orphanage. Also uh-huh. known as El Orfanato in Spanish. Is that really how you pronounce that? Of course. Directed by J.A. Bayona. Who also directed, most recently, what? What? You're going to love this. He directed the first two episodes of Rings of Power. Wow. That's embarrassing. And before that? Poor man. He probably needed the money. He's got some. He did Fallen Kingdom. A Monster's Call. I actually want to watch A Monster's Call. Yeah, I heard about that one. I want to see it too. He did the screenplay. The screenplay is written by Sergio Sanchez. Mm-hmm. He did the film The Impossible, which was also directed by his friend. Starring Belin Rueda, Fernando Cayo, Roger Prinzip, Mabel Rivera, Monsterat Carulo, Andres Gertrudigs, Edgar Vivar, and Geraldine Chaplin. I kind of said the Indian a little bit. I became kind of Gandhi for a second. You did. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Cool. Okay. How would you categorize this movie? Or can you? Psychological horror. And I actually hate that term, but it's probably the most appropriate. Supernatural. Yeah, but the psychological kind of impaired. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you think supernatural horror. I don't know. I say psychological because of the way it's paced and the way it's like carried out. Mm-hmm. There's only one blood and gut scene, really, kind of her face when it's kind of separated. Yeah, it doesn't go for any cheap scares. So you got nothing that way. You got no jump scares. Yeah. And you got no, really no horrifying images Mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, the feeling of horror. Are you generally creeped out by children? Yes. Yeah. Of course. You are. Well, in these movies, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, everyone. It's kind of like the horror thing. Children, dolls, clowns. See, I I I don't find it creepy. I don't find it creepy at all. I find clowns very creepy, but not little kids. I, it's just never, it's find, never got me. I find clowns laughable. So there were some scenes in this that I, I think you expected me to find creepy. I, they were well done, but I didn't find any of it creepy. Oh, when she's knocking and she turns around, those stupid little kids are freaking behind her. Yeah, didn't do anything for me. Woo! No, and that got you. Yeah, it's unsettling. There's like mm-hmm. these fucking little ghost kids behind her and she's knocking on a wall and she's all for it too right she was all for it she kind of liked it why do you weird. think she liked it probably because she has a sense about it when she because her the whole entire point is because she's trying to get her kid back so nothing can scare her when she's that determined yeah and really this is uh i would assume going to be kind of spoiler filled because there is a twist at the end of this movie that you had to explain to me <laughs> yeah she was kaiser so same <laughs> Damn, well, why'd you have to spill the beans that early? It. I can't believe you did Kevin that. Spacey is Kaiser Sose. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, that was well done. Dumbledore dies. He does? Of course. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, it was, uh, th- th- this was good. It was good. I wasn't blown away by it. It was, uh, and man, come on. That couch is way too comfortable. I get sleepy and I, I miss certain things and that just yeah so we're we're doing these movie reviews and we're supposed to be invested in this and now i can't legitimately talk about this movie because i miss things thankfully you're there to explain them to me so let's dumb this down and let's let's do some simpler pieces moving forward maybe that's why i've chosen texas chainsaw massacre and other movies like that because i know it's super super easy for me to follow what do yeah. you think yeah you should put that in your female tinder profile that you're <laughs> It's perfect. I don't really like to get in depth on things. I just have a good time. I like napping and I love the office. And I don't like me lifting heavy. I like more getting like a workout, you know, and like yoga. I just, you know, it makes me feel good. And I just feel, you know, I don't like count calories. I like to just, you know, just be healthy, you know. But I have some drinks sometimes too with the girls. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's my impression of Matt. <laughs> e- eerily, eerily similar to my life. <laughs> no, no further comment. No further comment. Let's get some blood work done, buddy. Let's let's do it. <laughs> let's see what you're okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, when when you did point out these things to me about this this movie, it um, it brought up one big theme, and that would be how do you live with the um, I don't know, how could I describe this uh, the immeasurable guilt, immense guilt of knowing that you played a hand in your child's death. 
Yeah, it was came from Matt and I talking about this may seem twisted. I, I'm a would be writer, so I was just thinking like, whatever you had like a kid and you loved them and you told the kid, hey, don't ever feed the dogs when I'm gone, you know, because I told you not to, right? And then the kid, because kids break rules, does feed the dog chocolate or something, and you come back and your dog's dead. Like then, do you yell at the kid? Do you like you know punish him right there? Do you make him traumatic right there? It's gonna be traumatic enough to kill the dog. And then how do you feel after your beloved dog has passed away that your kid did? It's interesting when you see in good writing complex emotions and how you handle that. And this is one of these cases where it's like, she, she locked the kid in there. <laughs> he didn't yeah. have the, the, the power to open the freaking door. He was trying. And he fell over and broke his neck and died. And it was decaying in their house for months. And they didn't smell it for a reason. Yeah. yeah. It's just weird. It's heartbreaking. What, what do you, I mean, it's obviously impossible to put yourself there in those shoes when you don't have a child. And that's something you don't want to do ever, especially if you have a child, is think about something like that. But it, unfortunately, it is reality and it does happen. But how, how do you move forward? How do you, how do you think the proper way of grieving, how do you think there is, or is there a proper way to grieve something like that and get over it potentially? I would take a bunch of pills and convince myself I'm going to Never Everland and die. Oh, wait, that's how it ended. It is. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Peter Pan comparisons in this. Um, she's windy, obviously, right? Yeah. And they're the Lost Boys. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I don't know. I mean, this is one of these things where you, I mean, if I were a psychologist, right, you get to first say it's not all your fault. I don't know. That's why psychology is interesting. I don't think some things you can get over. And I think people have a hard time with that, but they just become a part of your life and you learn how to deal with it. I don't yeah. think you do get over it. And there's no right answer. Yeah. You did the thing. The thing is there. Now you have to live on with it. The thing is that you got to try to figure out how to work through it and not let it negatively alter your life forever. You just have it like, okay, this happened. Maybe an analogy would be like if you lose like a finger or a hand or whatever. Like, okay, lost a hand. Yeah. Am I going to wake up every single day and say, I'm missing a hand. I'm missing a hand. I can't play the piano. I can't play baseball. I lost a hand. I lost a hand. Or do you just say, okay, I lost a hand. What do I do now? Now I move on. Like, you know, I get, I get over it. After, and now I have to, I can't, I can't keep waking up saying, I'm Daniel. Missing my hand. I'm just Daniel. But I think with this, you go past like, I had a hand in it. You know, I feel guilty about it. I got over it. And now I go on. You know, you don't say, oh, I'm the mother that killed my child. I, I'm a mother, you know, or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like you just, yeah. I don't know. I'm not an expert. This is me just spitballing in my head. You made a mistake. Yeah. I mean, it's human error. Um, this made me, when I was thinking about this, this made me think about an episode of Dr. Phil that I saw 15 years ago, maybe. There was a grandmother on there and she was going to her grandson's birthday party. who was four years old, three, four years old, something like that. She was leaving the party for some reason, I think maybe to go get something into return. She wound up running over her grandson with a car. Killed him. And she was on Dr. Phil trying to move past that moment in her life that, that changed her family structure forever. I don't know. I, I think for me, putting myself in someone's shoes like that, that would be fucking impossible to go on um, in a situation like that, I would imagine. Yeah. I know that's a hard turn off of this movie plot, but really that is, that is the overlying theme of this whole movie is dealing with grief of a loved or the loss of a loved one and, uh, being, being responsible for that loss. Yeah. I feel kind of bad for the dad. He gets kind of boned in the whole thing. He does like the whole thing. He gets, but he's like trying to support his wife. He's getting sick of it. He's trying to be firm. Then he feels a little bit softer cause he doesn't want to be too firm. And like, you know, his wife comes back and she's dead with your child that had been like decaying for like, you know, like this poor guy's probably like, man, I know they try to wrap him up at the end. He smiles, but no, mm. that's not how it would end. That no, guy would be fucking... no, not at all. Yeah. Like imagine that you come home at the windowsill is your wife dead, you know, now flies on her. Something's day, day two, right? She's dead for two days at least, or at least 36 hours. Yeah. And there's a decaying boy in her hand. Like that's, that's how do you deal with that? Mm. You know, and they kind of just wrote him out like, and he smiles as he recognizes she's still there. I'm like, no, man, that would. <laughs> you go numb. I think that you get a go. bottle of Jack yeah, and you lock be... yourself in an attic and you just. Yeah, that's hard. You you self-medicate. Anyways, um, not. And it was it was weird with this because you, you turn this tragic event and this tragic uh, revealing at the end of this movie into <laughs> almost an uplifting message. Yeah. And. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to respect the effort in doing that. It was very deus ex machina, you know, just like, oh, and then he uh, recognizes she's still alive and he's happy and then they find peace. You're like, no, wait, what? 
He's like, I oh, don't just, just sh- the credits roll. Right? Credit, the credits rolling. Shut up. And he's moving on to your next movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm also glad that um, they haven't touched this as far as a remake or an American reboot is concerned. I assume that's coming at some point. I don't know. I don't know how popular. Well, it was popular then. I just don't know how. There's another one called Good Night, Mommy. Have you heard of that? I think it was Swedish horror film. I was going to suggest that. But Slow Burn, super, super intense apparently. But that just came out, the American version with Naomi Watts. What's with her in freaking scary movies? The Ring or The Grudge? It was The Ring. The Ring, yeah. The Ring back in the day. That was a hit. Do you remember liking that? I remember watching about 10 times her performance in Mulholland Drive and how good it was. Oh, wow. I haven't watched the movie. I just watched her scenes, which is actually what kind of made her career was Mulholland Drive. You've never seen Mulholland Drive? No. The whole movie. The director's weird. I've heard of. I don't. Well, David know. Lynch is really unusual. Yeah, I've, I've, I know. It's funny because I remember I saw it. I think a GIF on one of my forums. I turned the GIF into watching that clip of it, and I was like, "Man, talk about range as an actor! Like, how did she do that?" Yeah. When she's like watching the other guy, like with the girl, and she's like crying. I was like, "Dang, she's really good." Yeah. We're falling apart. Acting, performance, m- music, theme. What do you think, movie? Uh, I'm gonna give it a six five. Oh, you're going. I don't know. I didn't mean. Rating. I'm just gonna give it a six five. I didn't mean rating it. I meant Sorry. So. Um, it, it was good. It was pretty. The settings were cool. It was kind of creepy at times. Um, I wasn't blown away by any of it. I think they they did a really good job creating the ambiance that was slightly unsettling at times and almost when what was it specifically when she found what what who she thought was a social worker in the tool shed and she kind of ran off. The music they were playing was almost disney like i thought that was kind of unusual so and again it wasn't a movie that i could really categorize i mean it wasn't a horror movie um supernatural thriller maybe but anyways it was a horror movie it wasn't a horror movie no no not a horror movie but you got to respect him for not going for cheap scares because that's easy to do I wonder how much is this just because your take on how scared you were Hmm, that's true the music I, i didn't notice the music Maybe I should have, but it's not much to notice. Okay, so in that one, you know how how I mentioned that in the past, and that's huge for me. I I really love a good score, and if I'm not noticing it, then everyone loves the score. Yeah, of that, everyone loves the score. Everyone loves to score. Yeah, of course. You almost scored today. Yeah, like Hans Zimmer. You should go for it. I yeah. think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I give it a little. High. I give it a seven five. Is that fair? Yeah. You know, this could be Oblivion esque for me. Maybe I need to see it again. I don't think you were. Yeah, I think some parts. It takes a couple of watches. First of all, when I explained to you the end, the poisoning and like that's why she killed the kids and yeah, and I'm not gonna like super defend this. I like it. I give it a. It's just, I think it's seven five. I'm not giving it an eight, which is actually a pretty good score for me. It means like wow, this is like you know you probably should watch. Like this is something you should. For me, it's just like I respect it. I like that it's original in itself. It's like... And this is an original screenplay, right? This isn't based on anything else? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. No, performances are good. It's unsettling to me. It's very unsettling. That scene where she finds the, 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 the kid, it's just so messed up. That was a absolutely stunning shot when she's coming down those stairs at the end. I do remember that and being really, I wanted to pause it and just stare at that shot. Yeah but I'm going to stick with my number. I'll give it another view. We will bump it up a little bit. And here's the thing. Like I said, it's just, it, it is a horror movie. There aren't good horror movies. It's if you ask like everyone, you know, or whatever age, I don't know, 20 to 60 would vary, but I, I bet the consensus would come to something like the omen or whatever. You hear that the omen mm. or like, um, Linda Blair. What was that? Exorcist. Exorcist. Yeah. Those aren't scary. Uh, you know, they're not really that scary. I, I, that's the thing with horror too. It has so much to do with timing and where you are in your life. And sorry, I must be tired. I didn't mean scary. Why I must be tired. I mean, that wasn't very good. Sorry. Yeah. Everyone, they'll say like, oh yeah, if you want to talk about the best horror, probably the exorcist. And I'm like, yeah, but why is it saying something really unique or this movie had something more to say, I feel like, and and, and it acted, it, it acted out through the characters and it did it in a, um, not in a cheap way. Yeah, that scene when she uh, gets hit by the car, the the special effects or the practical makeup effects were pretty incredible. I just like it didn't have to conform to anything. You can't really compare it to other movies that are like this. Maybe you say the others, sorry, yeah, the others or whatever yeah. would be close. But still, like I said, I like I like that you can't compare it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I'm big in games. You know, and people say like, uh, oh, it's the Elder Scrolls Skyrim meets Minecraft. Mm. Now you understand. For me, do that with this movie. It's hard because it's. 
Yeah, that's a good point. It fits into a category by itself. Yeah, or at least it, it, it makes the effort to, and that's what I respect about it, is mm-hmm. when a movie does that, and you're like, you know, oh, it's uh, Mission Impossible meets, uh, I don't know, Conan the Barbarian, and you're like, okay, yeah. so like a spy that's kind of a barbarian. Oh, I see. But that's when you're like, it, when it defines itself, it's harder to categorize like that. Yeah. Yeah, what did this movie uh, pull from directly? Because usually you can pinpoint stuff where it's a blatant ripoff in the majority of movies. There's not a lot that's original. That's a good point. Um, I will say that my favorite scene, with the exception of that shot of her coming down the stairs, was was the, um, would you call it a ghost hunt? Yeah, the, the map. That was really well done. Let's take that. You're the you're person making a scary movie. You're like, okay, this woman's exposing this thing. I know what I'll do. I'll make this woman look at scary stuff and then I'll show you, right? They didn't show you anything. Yeah. All they did was made this guy quickly use a, a map and go really quickly, you know, like into different rooms and for screams to come or whatever, but you didn't really see anything. Yeah. I think a, a movie would have the girl like screaming, whatever. And then they would show the audience what you would see if you were her and you'd see like mutilated kids or like, you know, crying, you know, something like that. It didn't show you that he had to imagine what it was. Right. You had to think what that would make you feel. Or how scary it would be. And a lot of times you've heard it over and over again. The scariest things are the things you can't see and you just imagine. Yeah, yes. the kids are scaring, screaming and saying, we're, we're, we're dying, we're, help us, and we're poison. And then you have to imagine what that's like. They didn't show you kids vomiting and like bleeding or whatever. And that's what I'm saying. The trope would be, now we take the camera, we pan it from her, we pan it out, and you look at all the kids and you're like, oh. You yeah. know, do like a little filter effect and it changes to what they see. And you're like, oh, I'm going to remember that later. That really messed me up. They didn't do that. Right. There wasn't a lot of those things you can reference. Sure. Or like that scene with a smile. Remember the smile or the scary? You're like, no, because there wasn't <laughs> one, you know, or the skull. There, there wasn't a skull. It was unsettling yeah. consistently. Okay. Speaking of unsettling, let's uh, get on to next uh, next week. It's going to be one that neither of us have ever seen, a big one, uh, regarded by many as... I would say top five, top 10 of all time horror movies. So it's kind of a big deal, but you know, keep those expectations low. If you can do that with a movie like this and let's watch uh, the original, the thing, John Carpenter. <laughs> I got, I got to fucking understand what you're doing there, dude. Um, so for the listener, our guy here is all oh, the I, thing. Yeah. John Carpenter, um, Kurt Russell as the, <laughs> are you just fucking with me right now? Uh, Kurt Russell yeah forget who else is in it what supposed to be good special effects (laughs) 